Lesson 9 Covenant Sign Sabbath Afternoon May 22 God created the world in six days and rested upon the seventh. He sanctified and blessed the seventh day and made it his sacred memorial. Wherefore, he declares, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. Exodus chapter 31 verse 16. Those who do this, keeping all of God's commandments, may claim the promises contained in Isaiah chapter 58 verses 11 to 14. The instruction given in this chapter is full and decided. Those who refrain from labor on the Sabbath may claim divine comfort and consolation. Man is not to do his own pleasure on God's holy day. He has six days in which to work at secular business, but God claims the seventh as his own. In it, he says, thou shalt not do any work. Exodus chapter 20 verse 10. The servant of God will call sacred that which the Lord calls sacred. Thus he will show that he has chosen the Lord as his leader. The Sabbath was made in Eden, when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. God has placed it in our charge. Let us keep it pure and holy. Medical Ministry, page 215. Great blessings are unfolded in the observance of the Sabbath, and God desires that the Sabbath day shall be to us a day of joy. There was joy at the institution of the Sabbath. God looked with satisfaction upon the work of his hands. All things that he had made, he pronounced very good. Genesis chapter 1 verse 31. Heaven and earth were filled with rejoicing. Though sin has entered the world to mar his perfect work, God still gives to us the Sabbath as a witness that one omnipotent, infinite in goodness and mercy created all things. Our Heavenly Father desires, through the observance of the Sabbath, to preserve among men a knowledge of himself. He desires that the Sabbath shall direct our minds to him as the true and living God, and that through knowing him we may have life and peace. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 6, page 349. The true Sabbath is to be exalted to its rightful position as God's rest day. In the 58th chapter of Isaiah is outlined the work which God's people are to do. They are to magnify the law and make it honorable, to build up the old waste places, and to raise up the foundations of many generations. To those who do this work, God says, Thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shalt honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words, then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 6, page 351. Sunday, May 23. Origins. When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy, the Sabbath was given to the world that man might ever remember that in six days God created the world. He rested upon the seventh day, blessing it as the day of his rest, and gave it to the beings he had created, that they might remember him as the true and living God. By his mighty power, notwithstanding the opposition of Pharaoh, God delivered his people from Egypt, that they might keep the law which had been given in Eden. He brought them to Sinai to hear the proclamation of this law. By proclaiming the Ten Commandments to the children of Israel with his own voice, God demonstrated their importance. In awful grandeur, he made known his majesty and authority as ruler of the world. This he did to impress the people with the sacredness of his law and the importance of obeying it. The power and glory with which the law was given reveal its importance. It is the faith once delivered to the saints by Christ our Redeemer, speaking from Sinai. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 8, pages 197 and 198. We have the positive word of God in regard to the Sabbath. 
Is it possible that so much importance can be clustered about those who observe the Sabbath, and yet no one can tell when the Sabbath comes? Then where is the people who bear the badge or sign of God? What is the sign? The seventh-day Sabbath, which the Lord blessed and sanctified, and pronounced holy with great penalties for its violation. The seventh-day Sabbath is in no uncertainty. It is God's memorial of His work of creation. It is set up as a heaven-given memorial to be observed as a sign of obedience. God wrote the whole law with His finger on two tables of stone. Selected Messages, Book 3, page 318 God's holy rest day was made for man, and acts of mercy are in perfect harmony with its intent. God does not desire His creatures to suffer an hour's pain that may be relieved upon the Sabbath or any other day. Heaven's work never ceases, and men should never rest from doing good. The Sabbath is not intended to be a period of useless inactivity. The law forbids secular labor on the rest day of the Lord. The toil that gains a livelihood must cease. No labor for worldly pleasure or profit is lawful upon that day. But as God ceased His labor of creating and rested upon the Sabbath and blessed it, so man is to leave the occupations of his daily life and devote those sacred hours to healthful rest, to worship, and to holy deeds. The work of Christ in healing the sick was in perfect accord with the law. It honored the Sabbath. The Desire of Ages, page 207 Monday, May 24 Sabbath before Sinai the Sabbath was embodied in the law given from Sinai, but it was not then first made known as a day of rest. The people of Israel had a knowledge of it before they came to Sinai. On the way thither the Sabbath was kept. When some profaned it, the Lord reproved them, saying, How long refuse ye to keep my commandments and my laws? Exodus chapter 16, verse 28. The Sabbath was not for Israel merely, but for the world, it had been made known to man in Eden, and like the other precepts of the Decalogue, it is of imperishable obligation. Of that law, of which the fourth commandment forms a part, Christ declares, Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. So long as the heavens and the earth endure, the Sabbath will continue as a sign of the Creator's power. And when Eden shall bloom on earth again, God's holy rest day will be honored by all beneath the sun. From one Sabbath to another, the inhabitants of the glorified new earth shall go up to worship before me, saith the Lord. Matthew chapter 5 verse 18 and Isaiah chapter 66 verse 23. The Desire of Ages, page 283. While preparation for the Sabbath is to be made all through the week, Friday is to be the special preparation day. Through Moses, the Lord said to the children of Israel, Tomorrow is the rest of the holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which ye will bake today, and seethe that ye will seethe, and that which remaineth over lay up for you to be kept until the morning. And the people went about, and gathered it, the manna, and ground it in mills, or beat it in a mortar, and baked it in pans, and made cakes of it. Exodus chapter 16, verse 23, and Numbers chapter 11, verse 8. There was something to be done in preparing the heaven-sent bread for the children of Israel. The Lord told them that this work must be done on Friday, the preparation day. This was a test to them. God desired to see whether or not they would keep the Sabbath holy. This direction from the lips of Jehovah is for our instruction. The Bible is a perfect guide, and if its pages are prayerfully studied by hearts willing to understand, none need err upon this question. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 6, pages 354 and 355. Death entered the world because of transgression, but Christ gave His life that man should have another trial. He did not die on the cross to abolish the law of God, but to secure for man a second probation. He did not die to make sin an immortal attribute. He died to secure the right to destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. 
he suffered the full penalty of a broken law for the whole world. This he did, not that men might continue in transgression, but that they might return to their loyalty and keep God's commandments and his law as the apple of their eye. Testimonies to Ministers and Gospel Workers, page 134. Tuesday, May 25. Covenant Sign The fourth commandment alone of all the ten contains the seal of the great lawgiver, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Those who obey this commandment take upon themselves his name, and all the blessings it involves are theirs. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his sons, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 to 27. Through Moses was given also the promise, The Lord shall establish thee an holy people unto himself, as he hath sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God, and walk in his ways. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 9 and 10. Testimonies for the Church, volume 6, pages 350 and 351. Christ is the author and finisher of our faith, and when we yield to his hand, we shall steadily grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior. We shall make progress until we reach the full stature of men and women in Christ. Faith works by love and purifies the soul, expelling the love of sin that leads to rebellion against and transgression of the law of God. Through the agency of the Holy Spirit, the character is transformed and the mind and will of the human agent are brought into perfect conformity to the divine will, and this is conformity to the divine standard of righteousness. To those who are thus transformed, Christ will say, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. Revelation chapter 22 verse 14. That I may know him, page 162. We should jealously guard the edges of the Sabbath. Remember that every moment is consecrated holy time. Whenever it is possible, employers should give their workers the hours from Friday noon until the beginning of the Sabbath. Give them time for preparation that they may welcome the Lord's day with quietness of mind. By such a course, you will suffer no loss even in temporal things. Before the Sabbath begins, the mind as well as the body should be withdrawn from worldly business. God has set his Sabbath at the end of the six working days that men may stop and consider what they have gained during the week in preparation for the pure kingdom which admits no transgressor. We should each Sabbath reckon with our souls to see whether the week that has ended has brought spiritual gain or loss. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 6, page 356. Wednesday, May 26. Sign of Sanctification. By the observance of the Sabbath, the children of Israel were to be distinguished from all other nations. Verily, my Sabbaths ye shall keep, Christ said for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. Exodus chapter 31, verse 13. The Sabbath is a sign of the relationship existing between God and his people, a sign that they are his obedient subjects, that they keep holy his law. The observance of the Sabbath is the means ordained by God of preserving a knowledge of himself and of distinguishing between his loyal subjects and the transgressors of his law. This is the faith once delivered to the saints who stand in moral power before the world, firmly maintaining this faith. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 8, page 198. 
The Sabbath given to the world as the sign of God as the Creator is also the sign of Him as the Sanctifier. The power that created all things is the power that recreates the soul in His own likeness. To those who keep holy the Sabbath day, it is the sign of sanctification. True sanctification is harmony with God, oneness with Him in character. It is received through obedience to those principles that are the transcript of His character. And the Sabbath is the sign of obedience. He who from the heart obeys the fourth commandment will obey the whole law. He is sanctified through obedience. To us as to Israel, the Sabbath is given for a perpetual covenant. To those who reverence His holy day, the Sabbath is a sign that God recognizes them as His chosen people. It is a pledge that He will fulfill to them His covenant. Every soul who accepts the sign of God's government places himself under the divine, everlasting covenant. He fastens himself to the golden chain of obedience, every link of which is a promise. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 6, page 350 Because the Sabbath was made for man, it is the Lord's day. It belongs to Christ. For all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. John chapter 1, verse 3. Since he made all things, he made the Sabbath. By him, it was set apart as a memorial of the work of creation. It points to him as both the creator and the sanctifier. It declares that he who created all things in heaven and in earth, and by whom all things hold together, is the head of the church, and that by his power we are reconciled to God. For speaking of Israel, he said, I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them, that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctify them, make them holy. Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 12. Then the Sabbath is a sign of Christ's power to make us holy, and it is given to all whom Christ makes holy. As a sign of His sanctifying power, the Sabbath is given to all who through Christ become a part of the Israel of God. The Desire of Ages, page 288 Thursday, May 27 Remembering the Sabbath at the very beginning of the fourth precept, God said, Remember, knowing that man in the multitude of his cares and perplexities would be tempted to excuse himself from meeting the full requirements of the law or, in the press of worldly business, would forget its sacred importance. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, the usual business of life, for worldly profit or pleasure. These words are very explicit. There can be no mistake. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 4, page 249. All through the week, we are to have the Sabbath in mind and be making preparation to keep it according to the commandment. We are not merely to observe the Sabbath as a legal matter. We are to understand its spiritual bearing upon all the transactions of life. All who regard the Sabbath as a sign between them and God, showing that He is the God who sanctifies them, will represent the principles of His government. They will bring into daily practice the laws of His kingdom. Daily it will be their prayer that the sanctification of the Sabbath may rest upon them. Every day they will have the companionship of Christ and will exemplify the perfection of His character. Every day their light will shine forth to others in good works. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 6, page 353. In the name of the Lord, I advise all His people to have trust in God and not begin now to prepare to find an easy position for any emergency in the future, but to let God prepare for the emergency. When the Christian is looking forward to duties and severe trials that he anticipates are to be brought upon him, because of his Christian profession of faith, it is human nature to contemplate the consequences and shrink from the prospects, and this will be decidedly so as we near the close of this earth's history. 
we may be encouraged by the truthfulness of God's word that Christ never failed his children as their safe leader in the hour of their trial. For we have the truthful record of those who have been under the oppressive powers of Satan, that his grace is according to their day. God is faithful who will not suffer us to be tempted above that we are able. There may be large mountains of difficulties in regard to how to meet the claims of God and not stand in defiance of the laws of the land. He, the believer, must not be making ample provisions for himself to shield himself from trial, for he is only God's instrument and he is to go forward in singleness of purpose with his mind and soul garrisoned day by day, that he will not sacrifice one principle of his integrity, but he will make no boasts, issue no threats, or tell what he will or will not do, for he does not know what he will do until tested. Selected Messages, Book 3, page 398. For further reading, Early Writings, The Mystery of Iniquity, pages 215 to 217, and Testimonies for the Church, The Observance of the Sabbath, volume 6, pages 349 to 351.